So hello and welcome to another episode of Chasing Green Arrows. Today I have with me my co-host Abra Aziz. How are you doing, sir? Sir, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. And a special guest, Mr. Zayan Babu Khan. How are you doing, sir? How's everything? I'm fine. Thank I you hope so. You're doing well. Thank you so much. I thank you for joining us today in uh, our discussion. Uh, so the Premier League is almost back. Another a week to go. I'm sure we're all excited. Uh, so I thought we'll just discuss a few things about uh, the return, and then we'll discuss the top four battle and relegation as well. Uh, so initially, I just wanted to go with you, Don. First, I'll go with you. Uh, your thoughts on the Premier League coming back? What are you excited about apart from, of course, watching football? And what are you nervous about? Um. Main, I mean, very, very excited that the Premier League is back. I mean, it's it's been a long wait. We've had we've had a couple months back, uh, like uh, in in the off season when like there was no football for two months. But just this time, I don't know. The the wait just seemed a lot longer. I I think because no, we didn't know like the outcome of the season or whatever. But at the same time, I just feel like this wait has been a lot harder on a lot of us because of course the pandemic Absolutely. situation and everything. It's 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 just been unfortunate uh, with what what has happened over the past couple of months. I just hope like you know uh, there's no second wave or anything that kind of disrupts the season moving forward and and just for just for like not only the season but for everybody else as well like just to like have continuity back uh, in terms of like everyone continuing to live their lives uh, comfortably and this this has been a hard time for everyone so it'd be nice to uh, see the back of it and at the same time you know you know how much I love football and it's just it's just something that uh, is is like a, I've missed it so much so I'm just very excited to for it to be back and i'm nervous about us not making the top four <laughs> so that is probably the only thing that is uh, that i'm nervous about uh, it yeah. looks a little unlikely with the way things are going of course but you never know like you know a couple of couple of bad games by the leicester's or chelsea or whatever and uh arsenal coming out uh, all guns blazing you never know we'll we might just make it that is my bias thinking towards it but we'll see yeah of course like we're all looking forward to it i think every football fan is like is go- uh, they're all going to be positive and all hoping that everything goes smoothly because three months without football is a huge thing because you don't even have like a off season like that so i think it's the first yeah. time we experience something like this but zayan i'll go to you uh, i wanted to ask you uh, how big of a part will uh, injuries play because you know normally uh, even off seasons you have like a one month preseason and then you come back into the league over here you only have a couple of weeks and you've been sitting at home it's not like i mean yeah you're working out at home and stuff but playing on a pitch and play and exercising at home is two completely different things so what are your thoughts on injuries and what are you looking forward to as well so i think that uh, since you know we've had such a long break uh, there's a big chance that all players from all teams they they probably won't have like enough match fitness yeah uh, or match sharpness rather and uh, I think it could work in the benefit of many teams and it could also for you know work against them. So I think it's very hard to say, take like a definitive call oh you know just because the points table is a certain way you know it might be very different at the end of the season because you know and also it's important to take into account the uh, lack of fans you know maybe uh, players might start treating the games as you know a training match and you know obviously in training you can make mistakes you can't in an actual game when it's yeah. going on so i think it could be tricky for many teams uh, but it could also benefit many other teams yeah and uh, what do you guys think about the uh, five substitute rule uh, i mean it, it looks ideal for now because of the situation um, do you think uh, now um, how do you think like coaches will look into this like don i'll go to you first about this um, like someone like guardiola he all, anyway rotates his team but now with five subs he has more so do you think um, uh, like how do you what do you what are your thoughts on this five substitute rule Yeah I think it, I think it is a very very important role to make I think it is one of the better rules that has come out uh, because uh, like we like like you guys discussed right this uh, players being rusty is going to be a is going to play a big part and like if if someone god forbid has like a bad injury or something and in that is like in the 81st 82nd minute when all the three substitutions are gone you don't want to like have play the t- last 10 minutes with like a with 10 men or whatever and this kind of just gives everyone a little bit time to kind of um, gel and 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 just come back with uh, with having that extra couple substitutions when needed. this is going to this is going to be in in our favor so for sure yeah yeah i mean yeah uh, mm. and zayan uh, uh, what about you the five substitute rule do you think uh, uh, how do you think managers will use it um, do you think it's something that uh, it'll help the players or is just because of the situation you have to do something about it um so 
I, I mean, I personally think that obviously it's necessary because you've had such a short run of preseason games. Yeah. But I'm just thinking uh, for, you know, managers like Mourinho who are, you know, try, you know, in the, especially in the big games, like try to yeah. disrupt the opponent and the run of play. Yeah. I'm sure he will, he's the kind of person who will probably wait till the 90th minute to use all five substitutes. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. So, uh, point, yeah. That's a very, very smart point. I mean, that's a very good point. I, I did not even so, look at it like that. I was just thinking about the rustiness, but that's but, a good point. I mean, but in general, I feel like, uh, you know, maybe we could see a few youngsters coming back, uh, you know, get more game time. Uh, players who have been injured for long periods like Harry Kane, Rashford, uh, you have Loftus-Cheek. So these kinds of players, I think they'll need it more than uh, any other player, I think. All these players who've had like these injuries issues. Yeah. I was actually reading something interesting. Normally, um, uh, injuries, uh, when an injured player comes back, it's very difficult for him to cope because everybody's playing in and out, right? Like week, uh, week in and week out. But uh, I was reading some article today, I think, and it was saying that now it'll it'll be a bit more even because even though someone like Harry Kane is coming back from injury, uh, nobody else has been playing football, right? In and out. So, I mean, there will be a difference, but it'll be a bit, uh, there will be a difference. In, I mean, it won't be as big. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. That's yes, another good yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that is another good point. Yep. Yeah, and I okay. Agree. So now let's discuss about the top four because I think the league we've decided like we know who's gonna win the league. Uh, Liverpool just need two more games, I think, and yeah. uh, it looks they might even win it in Everton, which will be crazy. But without fans, of course, it won't be as good. But I mean, Liverpool fans will be really happy about that. But uh, what do you guys think about the top four? Um, right now, Chelsea and Leicester are in the box seat took an, uh, for third and fourth. United are right behind, but so are the, the likes of Wolves, Sheffield and uh, Arsenal. But I was looking at the fixture list and it looks like Wolves and United have good fixtures, even though it hasn't, like United have actually played better against tougher teams. So it doesn't really make that much of a thing. But what do you guys think? How, how do you feel, Zayan? I'll go to you first. Uh, how does Chelsea look and do you think they'll be comfortably sealing the fourth spot? So, um, I think for Chelsea, their squad is a bit young. Uh, we've seen that this season. There's been a lot of good performances, but like a lot of inconsistent performances. Uh, I think they have a trickier uh, fixture list compared to like Man United. Yeah. And I think they would not be in the position they are in if it wasn't for the inconsistencies of all these other teams like Man United who seem to play well against the big teams but really struggle against the smaller teams. Uh, and then, of course, Arsenal and Spurs have had their issues this season as well. Yeah. So I think um, it's just a few games. And as I said before, it'll be hard to like give definitive judgments based on you know how there's been such a big break in football. But um, I think Chelsea will probably see it through. But I think they'll probably just scrape it. Even before the um, uh, lockdown, uh, it was very difficult, right? Because uh, whenever Chelsea drop points, United drop points. When United won, Chelsea won. Like, uh, exactly. I think United, Chelsea, Arsenal have been really extremely inconsistent. United uh, started off the league very poorly, and uh, they were getting a lot of stick. But then I think towards the end of like uh, until the lockdown happened, they picked up and they started playing well. Uh, but it's I think the inconsistency has been a trend throughout the season. And Don, what are your thoughts? Uh, Arsenal have a game in hand. Uh, if they beat City, they're right back in the race. Yeah, they have to beat City. His first game back, I don't know if that's uh, that's the best. I mean, you never you know. Obama like, might... scoring, uh, sorry to cut you, but you see Obama yeah. scoring a hat-trick in the first game back. Always, man. Always, Obama. I'm scoring a hat trick. I'm, I'm going, I'm going for, I'm going for three-one Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> that's just my bias talking, though. But like that, that's a very, very big game considering the position. Like I was just looking at the table, right? It's, yeah. It, it, forty points. We're at forty points right now in a nine position. But if we make that three points, right? We're at forty-three. That's two points behind fifth place United and five yeah. points behind fourth place Chelsea, right? So that's a very, very big game. And then just hope. Like like uh, Zion was mentioning uh, that Chelsea is a younger team, so hope for them to uh, falter a little bit and and like in those pres- pressure situations kind of uh, um, falter a little bit because I, I I honestly think it's only a, it's only the fourth place that's that's up for grabs amongst four or five teams. Almost. You don't think Leicester will uh, tumble? They have five points over fourth place uh, or fourth place position, right? So they need to like lose two or three games consistently because there are 
what nine games left total so they need to lose like three games it, it's it's harder for them to like tumble they have to lose a lot a lot of games and the others have to continue to win right so yeah. that's my feeling but i mean of course uh, this this is going to be uh, this is like never kind of faced situation for anybody so it's just going to be like who manages their team better and who kind of uh, uh, comes out stronger in those pressure games or or like or comes out with those gritty 1-0 wins when 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 needed i think those will that will c- count and i think at that at, for that for that matter i think chelsea might falter a little bit just because of the younger squad and the younger manager and for arsenal also similarly because arteta has just come in and he's also not not really had a full season that's how i feel like i feel like maybe the likes of uh, uh United or Wolves might just pick up that fourth spot uh, over over the likes of maybe Chelsea and Arsenal. But that's just my opinion. And I think, like you discussed, Liverpool, City, Leicester, and maybe Wolves, I think. That's yeah, the I'll go with those top four. Uh, do you think that it'll continue like this? Like, I mean, like, uh, in terms of, like, uh, you know, we saw Liverpool dominating and everything. Or do you see uh, some surprises in the first two, three weeks in terms of upsets because of lack of football in the last two, three months? 100% I feel like there's going to be a couple of upsets. 100%. I think I think too? it's yeah. Uh, so yeah. I mean yeah. it's the Premier League it's bound to happen. Yeah. So, uh, you, uh, yeah, I mean it'll take I think a few weeks to get that flow back. It won't be the same the first game round. And I think what Zan's uh, point about fans uh, that's a huge point actually. I was thinking about it right now and uh that home away advantage has gone and we've seen many times in the Premier League where, you know, like the crowd start 0-0, like 70th minute and the crowd, home team crowd goes crazy and they suck in a goal some way or the other, right? Yeah. So, I think that's a very important point as well. It'll be interesting to see how they manage that. Uh, but yeah, and uh, Zan, I wanted to ask you about uh, how happy are you about Werner signing? Uh, I think it's an unbelievable signing and uh, what impact do you think he'll have on Chelsea? So, when I was speaking about Chelsea, I actually forgot to mention, you know, the likes of Ziyech and Werner coming in. Obviously, it could give a boost around the club. Uh, you know, it could make players like Abraham, for example, like more energized. Yeah. Or, you know, like there's someone who's actually going to give me competition and I need to prove to the manager, you know, I'm I, I'm still ready to be the Chelsea number nine. So, you know, maybe players like him can come Roaring back and actually yeah. bang a bunch of goals. So well, this will be next could... season, though, right? Uh, or yeah, I don't think yeah. they play it'll, this season, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it'll be next season, but I think it will give uh, yeah. a boost to the team overall. Yeah, for sure. And of course, and I think obviously competition for places is very important, as we know. So I think uh, you know Batshuayi has been very disappointing this season, and Giroud. I think the manager until very recently, you know, until the pandemic started just before the pandemic started you know he wasn't getting a game so I think there was a bit of complacency from the likes of Abraham and Mount even Mount for example because you know you don't have Loftus-Cheek for you know what 10 months now and I think Barkley you know we just know he's not like the most reliable player so I think you know even players like Loftus-Cheek, Pulisic, you know, coming back and you know, have knowing that these signings are coming in, it could actually give Chelsea a boost and it could actually motivate some players. Yeah, that's actually what happened to Drogba, right? Like you're talking about Abraham, like how this competition will actually help him improve. Uh, I remember when Shevchenko came, uh, everyone thought he was going to be the leading thing, but Drogba upped his game and he was the star. Then when Torres came, same thing. Uh, but yeah. he actually gelled with Anelka, I think. Anelka was a big signing as well, but they actually gelled like together. So that I think it worked in Drogba's favor, these signings. like He kept improving mm-hmm. his game. So if Abraham can do that, uh, I think that's what will help Chelsea. Because you don't want him yeah. to go out of the picture, right? I mean, he won't want exactly. that. So, like, uh, exactly. And as a fan as well, like this season, you know, after so many seasons, we only had like, John Terry, who was our, yeah. only, like, youth, our only yeah. youth prospect actually playing. So... I think this season, uh, as a Chelsea fan, it actually connected me more because, uh, you know, you actually have players from the academy, players who actually want to fight for the shirt. You know, we're not signing, we're not playing players like, you know, Zappa Costa and Bakayoko and Murata, you know, who are just there for like, oh, you know, big money signing. They don't have any affiliation with the club. You know, even if I don't play bad, you know, I can always exit the club. So I feel like these players have more of a point to prove. They have more of a reason to fight for the shirt and I think it's actually engaged me as a fan so I would love to see Abraham you know pull off something like a drogba 
Yeah. Would you so... would you keep uh, would you keep Batsui uh, would you keep uh, Batsui or Giroud as your as your backup striker? As your I'll number three, pretty much. I would definitely keep Giroud because uh, I think he's a very underrated player. Uh, you know, he's actually a very different type of player. You know, just from the ball in the box, he'll be there. You know, the headed in. I think his link-up play is also amazing, and you know, I, I think as an older player, he also, you know, can rub off well on like the younger players like Abraham, and uh, you know, maybe other academy prospects. So I think, I think Batshuayi, uh, I really wanted him to be a success because you know, first season he was there, he won us the league at West Brom, yeah. uh, but I think it hasn't really worked out. You know, he had so many failed loan spells. I think. the signing of burner will probably push batshuay out i think lampard has also lost trust in him because i think when we played man united uh, before the uh, premier league closed you know he was absolutely woeful yeah. and i think ever since then giroud was playing and we actually saw our results become better so i think giroud definitely Yeah. yeah he brings a he brings a different dimension also to the to the style of play like you know from what chelsea is it so yeah exactly. i had agree with that yeah He's, you would <laughs> i <laughs> as an arsenal fan yeah. i i I've, i've always been a fan of giroud i mean one of, one of the i mean he's he he has his flaws no doubt but i've i've i liked i've i've liked his time in in um, uh in arsenal and his copy and kick will always be remembered that beautiful <laughs> yeah. <copy and> <laughs> yeah but uh, <laughs> But yeah, actually, yeah. Sorry, Don. You're saying something. I was, I was, I was. Okay. What do you, what do you, what do you think about United's prospects in the top four? Do you think, and what do you feel about United just in general? Like, what are your thoughts on on them? To be honest, the fixture li- list looks amazing. Uh, but like you know, this whole season we've been done better in games. Uh, United have done better game in games where it's been more challenging. Like you know, where they expect where they were expected to lose against City, against Chelsea away. uh they uh, they got a point from liverpool also so uh, i think they've done better in big games with that style suited them the counter attack style but definitely definitely bruno fernandes has changed the compl- uh, he's com- he's changed united like uh, their hopes and everything i wouldn't say top 4 if the, uh, before january but now there is a chance i won't be surprised if they don't make it but there is a chance like right now united are fighting but then again don't be surprised if they lose four five games when the league starts and uh, you know because it's happened under solchay united have been inconsistent but um, i mean look at lampard like you know he's had one year uh, he, this is his first season and people are saying giving him t- give him time with solchar as well i think you should give him a bit more time even though i'm probably not the biggest fan of his tactics but what he's done with with bruno himself like what he's done in games in the last couple of months like before the lockdown i think there is some excitement there like uh so uh, let's see maybe un- until the end of the year at least until the end of this season let's see and give him another shot i think another season sorry i just uh, wanted to add um like from uh musiba's point uh i think one more benefit united actually might have is no europa league no europa league yeah. all all european comp even for arsenal like That's no a good european point, yeah. competition Yeah. And, Arsenal uh, were out of the European competition though. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, no, no, I, like don't worry. I wasn't trying to criticize you. I was just trying to make yeah. a point to somebody. Yeah, yeah. No, I completely forgot. I, I mean, I expected yeah, them yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he has to do that to me. It always he does this always to me, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But um yeah, I think uh, it does help. you know, Europe Europa League is no longer actually an issue for United because see, I remember Chelsea being in it last season and I'm sure, you know, for a broader way like even Arsenal like you know it's a longer competition than the premier league oh, uh, yeah. sorry the champions league and actually the trips tend to be longer for some reason because you have more obscure nations playing yeah and i think i think that really took a toll on the premier league like the performances in the league and i think if you're playing in the europa league and if you want to qualify for champions league i feel like all these premier league teams who are actually starting out there i think that's their priority and since there is no more europa league uh, at least for man united i think they can fully focus on uh, the premier league and also one more thing I th- i'm not sure if rashford is back he's back you know, he'll he's back he's I'm, back i'm i'm sure you know he'll also be a big boost for them yeah. and no. of course yeah, bruno Pog- fernandes also bruno fernandes. been amazing yeah. you have pogba coming pogba, in so yeah. it'll be it might be exciting to see uh, them all play together basically Yeah Don I actually wanted to ask you this like uh, uh from outside perspective uh, 
like uh, start of the season united to now you've seen a difference of course with bruno fernandes oh, absolutely yeah but what do you think uh, how is it going to work with pogba man because right now that's the most confusing uh, thing to talk about for united fans because he's so talented so talented but with the system now you have fernandes who's attacking right behind the striker right he's playing that number 10 yeah. position yeah. but that's where pogba shined in juventus uh, right. now if uh, now if you play pogba and bruno together who's going to man the defensive midfield part would you play like someone like matic and fred and will that work um yeah i mean um it's 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 unfortunate right like if if you if if you if you want to uh, pick fernandes against pogba like let, let's say last year right who do you pick you'd obviously pick pogba because of how pogba has been is this such a talented player uh, it's unfortunate i mean he's he's he, i i honestly like like you united fans i'm i'm confused myself right i don't know what's gone on and fernandes has made a made a point for himself in that place i don't know the only other thing i can think of is maybe you play like uh, matic and and uh, pogba from a little bit behind like a little bit more central midfielder role but i don't know if that's going to work out i think you're going to have to play with fred and matic a little bit behind uh, and let fernandes do the attacking t- attacking and then you have your three uh, forwards taking care of the goals and everything yeah. i think that's a fi- that's a formation that's worked for you guys yeah. especially with the uh, counter attacking football the only place i can see is maybe have him in sp- instead of like fred in 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 like a little bit more of a central midfield and then just uh the kind of uh, dictate play from there but uh, you need bruno in your team because of the performances that he's had recently so just before yeah. the pandemic of see course, that yeah. that's the problem so if pogba is uh, if they both do click then is united become a different team altogether right then they, they become, can control they can control yeah, they football they can try to yeah. challenging like if they but that, that's the problem but pogba hasn't really clicked and yeah. um, so that i think that's the issue they're going to face uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, right. uh, and I also want so i also wanted to ask you about um, uh, the transfer market because now the whole world has changed everything has changed like yeah. from Like for all of us, even our personal lives, everything has changed. But yeah. what do you guys think about the transfer market coming up? Uh, prices will definitely go down, in my opinion. But I don't know what you guys think about it. And uh, demand for players, will there still be movement this summer? And uh, hoping, we're just being positive right now and hoping that the season will finish without any problems. And then the new season will start in September, I think. Uh, we'll just hope, let's just assume this uh, as a positive note. And the, what do you guys think? How do you see the transfer market? I'll go with uh, Zayan first. So... um i think uh, i don't know i'm just thinking about like chelsea for example uh, we had transfer ban last year and we sold a bunch of players we also selling morata in the summer for like 58 million so we have a lot of cash sitting in the bank and i think that actually hasn't affected us you know the you know the the economy at least so i think teams such as chelsea who actually haven't spent much and who actually won't have like a financial crisis i think they will thrive and i think it will also benefit them since teams like dortmund for example uh, you have jaden sancho linked with every team in the world he you know before the pandemic it was like 120 million i think you know the asking price i can see that going down to at least like 100 or 90 because yeah. what you know because every team especially non premier league teams who don't get the revenue they definitely need the money so i i think i also read that roma will have to sell like their main players uh like zaniolo and pellegrini so i think all these teams from like the top five leagues but not the premier league i think they will probably struggle and i think they will probably have to let go many players yeah uh, good points don what's your uh, uh, what's your opinion on this uh, Subject. Yeah, I I I quite agree with with uh, with Zayn over there. I think the likes of uh, Chelsea and uh, I don't know if City, City has a transfer ban now. I I can't remember what happened with them, but they have some kind of an issue, right? No, the no, Champions, Champions League. League ban. Champions League. Oh, by mind. the way, we forgot we have to discuss that we as well. We have to. We yeah. have to. I, I'll yeah. come back. Yeah, we'll come back to that. Yeah. But um, but uh, yeah, I think I think the likes of Chelsea and and the Premier League team just in general, I think the Premier League is going to make up stronger. Exactly agree with Zayn's points over there because a lot of the other players will ha- will need revenue, so they'll have to sell. Their players and the likes of uh, uh, let's say Chelsea or or uh, the more cash rich teams like City and uh, uh, maybe even United will be able to pick up some of these players who in the positions that they need. I I do believe and I was reading an article about it and I do believe that um, uh, the Alexis Sanchez and uh, and uh, the swap swap which we had with um, uh, what is his name. Mkhitaryan. Yeah, Mkhitaryan and uh, and Sanchez. Th- apparently, those kind of deals will will 
start we'll see we'll see a few more of those deals happen because of because uh, the cash issues the cash issues and mm-hmm. um, it it will be it will be interesting to see how these clubs manage that kind of a situation because like for example like alexis and mikitarian i don't think it worked pretty well i mean alexis was terrible at united but mikitarian wasn't very good at arsenal either right i mean a little bit better maybe than than alexis at united but that didn't that that kind of didn't work, really work out for both teams so how they'll manage that is something i'll be intrigued to see so for the for the slightly cash tight teams it'll be that's an option that a lot of teams are i believe looking at so yeah. just i i'm intrigued to see how that comes how that pans out it won't affect um, uh, the top 4 uh, top 6 top six teams probably but i was going to ask you about uh, fan tickets uh, like ticket sales does it, will this affect i know it affects the league one and stuff but, prem, but, but the premier league because of how much they generate from tv revenue uh, do you feel that the, the, uh, it doesn't really make a difference i no? don't think so it's is my personal opinion i don't think because no i think you're right i've read something about it as well yeah, yeah. the only reason yeah. they're bringing the premier league back is because of the tv right they want yeah. the money from the tv cut to continue yeah. flowing yeah. that's the only reason so But I was just thinking about like teams like West Ham, Stoke. I don't know, but like e- e- they also benefit from the TV. So I'm Everyone's guessing, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just wanted uh, to say Stoke aren't in the Premier League. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I said Stoke. I don't know yeah, why I said Stoke. Get used to it. Sorry, Stoke's yeah. been there for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a good point actually. Um, uh, <laughs> the reason why I remember Stoke was because United were supposed to play a game today uh, against them, but it was a warm-up game, but oh, it got okay, cancelled yeah. because uh, hmm. a player got tested positive in Carrington. at the united oh, wow. training ground oh which player But, do you know Sto- stoke player i forgot oh. his name man okay, i was okay. reading it today so that's why the team uh, the match got cancelled this is what i'm uh, kind of worried about uh, yeah. i mean i don't yeah. want to be negative but uh, like you know they're getting tested and everything but there is always a chance like someone's going to get tested positive but it looks like right now they're going to try to do their best to finish the season so even if someone does get test pos- positive they'll just go and quarantine them no. and they'll continue that's what it looks like yeah Uh, and also uh, yeah. and all i'm just thinking like in the bundesliga like i mean i've been seeing a few matches here and the i don't think they've actually had many issues and i just feel like since the protocols they're taking uh, you know every day i think before training and after every match before every match they're testing players staff and stuff i i personally feel like there probably won't be any issues obviously i don't want to jinx it but yeah I okay, you like, don't think uh, it will be that because of the uh, protocols taken and all the precautions exactly. taken. Exactly. And obviously the players know that their money is on the line like they're being paid to do it right. So Yeah. Uh obviously there'll be exceptions. I think like Dini he didn't want to play. Yeah. yeah. Kante was not training for a while. So I think uh, there will be exceptions where I think overall you know I, before every match they will test and I think yeah. that's what happened in the Man United friendly match. before the game yeah. so i think hopefully you know there won't be any issues yeah and uh, last couple of points i wanted to uh, don you pointed it out about man city and the champions league ban the your uh, uefa ban um, I-, i think we're going to get a verdict by beginning to mid july uh, what do you, what do you think i don't think it's going to get i think it'll get overturned i don't think they're going to get banned but uh, what are your thoughts on this do you see at least a year ban coming or because there are some people are saying no they will get banned at least for a year uh, it could happen or will they get a proper ban what are your thoughts on it see honestly i think it get, like my, my my mind my mind says it'll get overturned because they'll like show some like cook some cook some story up or whatever but on a personal point of view i would love absolutely love for them to not make <laughs> it i would i i i that would not i would not be happier if it, like i that would be perfect the only thing is i want to make sure that the fifth team fifth spot team then may, gets that gets that i think that's spot. what's going to happen right yeah like yeah, yeah that's yeah, so So that way it just gives just gives a little bit more chance to like uh some someone like an Arsenal who's a little bit behind the table right now to yeah. to kind of spring a few victories together and and maybe hope for that fifth you know if not the fourth so yeah, that's this uh, just my thing yeah, I I mean it, it is realistic ch- there's a realistic chance that you do get banned for a year yeah. and this happen and yeah. that gives United Arsenal Tottenham everybody a big yeah. big chance to come the Champions yeah. League uh mm. but it'll be I don't even I don't even like to say the name of that other team so I, that's why I always say yeah. Arsenal United just hate that we team with passion about, we don't we talk, don't about, talk about, about that you don't like Tottenham as well huh <laughs> yeah I, I I mean I didn't I uh, initially I was fine with them uh, but I think in recent years they're you know they're trying to show off and trying to climb a bit much so uh, we have a million dollar stadium they, they, like now they're, they're trying to be relevant now so 
<laughs> I think before for me it used to be uh, United and Arsenal, but Arsenal are not as good Let anymore. Let me put it another way. But... Oh wow, we're not as good anymore. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that, these that's points. <laughs> I think that's the issue. I think Tottenham has become a competition. That's why you're saying this. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. that's what it is. Otherwise, before I didn't have any issue. Like I thought they were just a nothing club. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. And they still are, but in in a way, but yeah. I guess well, they're better than before. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, for them the good thing is they have whatever in our shadow that's all i have to say <laughs> <laughs> well for them the good thing is harry kane in uh, delhi i mean um, son is back as well kane is back yeah. as well so i think tottenham will have some uh, they'll have a chance an outside chance i guess uh, uh, better than before like uh, and it's and it's mourinho so we can never rule him out i guess yeah and don last... is... yeah sorry what were you saying about mourinho no that this is like it's just mourinho factor yeah, I feel like I mean, he can that factor, make a big like, difference. I don't know, man. Like, I agree with you, but at the same time, the factor looks like it's decreasing over the years. Like, yeah. I mean, he did with the Europa with United and stuff, but is and he came second in the Premier League, uh, which is still good achievements. But I just feel that United, uh, that Mourinho factor, maybe I don't know. I just feel like it's not as. And strong. also, I think uh, he needs his kinds of players because I feel like, yeah. uh, uh, you know, at United, you know, yeah, yeah, like Jones, Smalling, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. He, he didn't get... He's a solid uh, defense. At, exactly. So, I think even though in the last few seasons, Vertonghen and Aldevar, like, they were, like, one of the best partnerships. They just haven't been the same, you know. There's there's always been, like, exit rumors. And I, I feel like without if, if he doesn't have his players, they just falter, you know, wherever more in you. So, point, I yeah. think that will also work against them. Yeah. I'm just banking on that aspect of things. I just mm-hmm. hope that he get, he gets gets annoyed with something ha- that happens in the first game and it's just uh, curtains after that for them gives us yeah. a little bit more chance hey, but yeah I, I, Tottenham's always in a shadow I, I don't I don't agree with Zan's <laughs> point of them being <laughs> them being better whatever I don't even agree with that no, he, that he, it's like, a very valid point man the reason <laughs> I don't agree with it <laughs> and I don't like them top, top, I don't like I don't like saying they're good Consistent Word. top four team now, and they've been in the Champions League final. You have to give some credit. I know you won't, but I'm just saying for our viewers, you should. <laughs> I think if you ask me, uh, as not supporting either team and having almost equal hatred, I, I feel like Arsenal, you know, are still the bigger club. Uh, you know, having a big, bigger stadium doesn't matter. Uh, and of course, I feel like you have to win at least a couple of trophies, you know, in 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 a space of a few seasons, and they haven't done that. Even though reaching the Champions League final is an achievement, consistent top four is an achievement. Uh, I I don't think you get runner-up prizes, so I feel hey, like no, you you don't. But I'm just saying from where they were before. Yeah. To where they are now, like even Liverpool, it was a gradual process. Like I'm not comparing uh, Liverpool are much uh, like a much better off right now, but even them, it was a gradual kind of thing, right? They were seventh when Klopp came, and it took time. Like I mean, for I don't see Tottenham winning the Champions League anytime soon, but I'm just saying like uh, even Liverpool lost in the final, but then it strengthened them, right? They came back and yeah. they had that experience, and they won the league. Uh, they won the Champions League the next year. So, but yeah, I, I your points are completely valid. Uh, Don, this is the uh, highest. This is the highest they'll ever go. They're never going to get above this. And it was dumb of them to sack Poch. I don't think that sacking Poch was the yeah. answer to it. I think he's a great manager that should have been that should have been given a little bit more time. Uh, bringing Mourinho in, I don't know. He's he's um, he can, it can go both ways. You know, they can suddenly start winning everything, which I doubt because they wear the white and black of Tottenham. So, but, I agree uh, with that. Poch was incredible, yeah, man. Yeah. He, his, he was incredible the way he yeah. changed the team. They were, basically, they, they were basically like at Everton's level, uh, yeah. Spurs, and yeah. Poch basically took them all the way up. Yeah, yeah. Like, complete credit goes to him. And, like, the last season, it was incredible what they did. Like, yeah, they didn't win the final, but that season was incredible. Uh, but, was yeah. Move. But, Don, I want to ask you a question before we end uh, about Arsenal. What are your thoughts on Arteta? I know that you were not the biggest Emery fan. Uh, Arteta, uh, there's uh, some positive signs, but that inconsistency is still there. They lost in the Europa League. Uh, but, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, it's... Uh, uh, I mean, for me, uh, I've, I've, I've backed... Uh, uh, Arteta to to take managerial position even after Wenger left, right? There was there were rumors about it. I was backing him over Emery. I've never really been a fan of Emery, but when he came came on, I was supporting him full full uh, full heartedly. Uh, it, it is it is something. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, we got you back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, no, uh, no. yeah, it, there is there is there is a room for improvement. But I, but from what from what little I've seen from the signs of the past for the past two three months of him being a, a coach for the team, I'm I'm only I'm only delighted. Like I think I think we have a lot of scope for improvement. But I think I'm very very excited to see what Arsenal brings up in the in the near future. I think this season is of course uh, discounted uh, for him to just figure out his stuff. But I think next year. I'd be very, very intrigued to see how it comes out, and I'm, I'm very, very, very looking forward to it. And that's oh, probably uh, uh, but, all I have to say. <laughs> no, but like, uh, yeah, I mean, those are very valid points. But I had a uh, just a question because I've seen this problem with Wenger, right? Uh, Arsenal always looked a team that would compete, but they had a defender missing or a midfielder missing or a striker missing. I still feel right now they could have a defensive midfielder and a defender that they're missing for sure, and maybe possibly yeah. a left back as well. Uh, so, do you? What do you think? How do you think Arteta will approach this? Do you think he'll demand the players, or do you think he'll still adjust to it and still get, get uh, better performances from the current lot? And uh, yeah, first you answer this, and I have one more question about this. Yeah. I I 100% think that he, he he with with Arsenal's hierarchy it's it's hard to like demand players it it usually But won't happen. that be an issue then? It will it will but what I feel like is that he will be able to bring out better from the current players and don't forget we have Saliba coming in right he's a very very good defender so that spot is taken care of right I think we need a solid defensive midfielder I don't think that I think that's the only spot that we are lacking in right everything and else I think we're okay What about Obama Yang do you think he's going to leave there's I rumors. think I yeah there are rumors but I think he's going to stick around for one more season. I think if anything I think Lacazette might go. I mean I don't know there's there's rumors that Oba is probably going to go over Lacazette but I think that he stays for one more season. I think I think Arteta will be able to convince him to stay for one more season and then if we can play this full team like I think uh, we need to have like a full strength team. I think I think injuries has been a problem for Arsenal for a long time. But but I but think because if, of if, that you might you'll probably need sorry to cut you off. But because of that you'll probably need by, uh, signings, right? Because of oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I do believe I do believe that we have a solid team. I just think that we are because I think uh, we have some youngsters coming in who are who who have who have been decent to to fill up the backup roles and i yeah. think that we have a good good solid first 11 i just think we need a solid defensive midfielder and i think i think we can continue to try and uh, uh, pursue with toreo over there and i think that's that's going to help yeah. but i honestly have very high hopes uh, uh, from arsenal next season because i'm very excited I, I i feel like i've seen enough to to be a very excited about, the, yeah. about See, it. Like to be honest, even I agree with you in terms of like the, they have a solid eleven. But that's the problem. What I've seen is in, they they've been really inconsistent, and this is the part of the problem. Someone's injured, or they have a missing player in one of the positions. They have a missing piece, and this has happened. Like I mean, last year also they had good glimpses <laughs> under Emery. Uh, they reached the Europa League final, if I'm not mistaken, right? So yeah, they yeah. had a good run under Emery as well. So like, uh, I'm not comparing the managers, but I'm just saying there's always some part of the puzzle missing even under the Wenger era, which Arsenal might have to fix. But, like, I mean, right now it looks good with Arteta. Yeah. I, and I and I honestly think that he'll figure it out. I think he will be able to take care of those missing chunks. And yeah. uh, and, and he, I have a feeling that he, he knows what he's talking about. He just seems like a, a very calm man and a sensible head and, and the shoulders. So I think he'll be able to take care of it. And if he really needs someone, I think that uh, the Arsenal management is, is looking to... Uh, Support him fully, so that'll help for sure, I think. Okay, and before I get your predictions, one last question to Zayan, uh, because uh, I mean, we've had a lot of this. I mean, I've read a lot about this, and I'm sure you've discussed this with a lot of people. What are your thoughts on Lampard, and uh, what what do you see, uh, like what, as a manager? I'm saying, uh, not just the team he's running right now, but like his tactics uh, wise, and how long do you like? How long would you give him before like any decisions made? And are you happy with him as a manager? So, um, I personally. I'm, I was very excited when you know Sari left and came. I think Sari yeah. was very rigid, and you know he only had one system. And I I think if other teams figured it out, it was like disaster for us. And I think Arsenal were the first team to figure it out. Yeah. I think it was at the Emirates. <laughs> I think yeah. Ramsey, like Manmark, Jorginho. Yeah. 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 What a and good I, game that I, was. <laughs> some, uh, I remember some that. Of the, some of the performances with him were very painful to watch. Oh, you know, although he won us the Europa League, I, I was pretty happy. You know, he was leaving. Uh, I think it, maybe if he he had got like one more season, maybe things could have improved. But I think when Lampard came, I was excited not only because he's a Chelsea legend. Uh, actually, he's you know one of my favorite all-time players uh, as well. I mean, there's a long story to that. But yeah. um, 
I, j- I just feel like uh, he he knows what it's like to be a younger player because he has this history at West Ham where he didn't get, you know, game time and people are saying, you know, you're the uncle's, uh, what do you say, uh, like you're the manager's nephew. So that's why you're being picked and stuff. So, I mean, and West Ham had a good academy and people just thought, oh, you know, this is bias. But Nepotism. I think, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I think he knows what it's like to be a younger player. And obviously the transfer ban has helped. And I think obviously him being a player at Chelsea as well, he knew that there's this issue where Chelsea are always winning these youth cups and they're actually never giving these youngsters a chance. They're always on loan. So I think he really, you know, took it in his stride and he actually wanted to give these youngsters a chance. He put his full faith in them, you know, even if they had bad games. I remember when Abraham missed the penalty in the Super Cup, you know, a week later he was back in the team and he actually scored like for a few games running. He scored like a hat trick against Wolves uh, as well. So I just feel like the players also trust him. And I think that's the most important thing you need as a manager. Like if the players don't trust you, then, you know, you're not going to be successful. And also, uh, the question you'd ask, you know, about his tactics and stuff. I feel like uh, he, he's a he's kind of a mix of like Mourinho and Guardiola. Like maybe I'm just this is just my opinion. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. In the sense that I feel like uh, Mourinho was very tactical, at least his earlier days, uh, very pragmatic. Uh, you know, not especially in the big games. And you've seen like against the smaller teams that he actually encourages like the faster passing game and stuff so I wouldn't say he's as good as either of them of course he's a long way of him, but, but I mean I, I see a bit of both and I feel like he's also very flexible in terms of oh well, you know if this team you know if the 4-2-3-1 is not working let's try the back three if that's not working let's try the 4-3-3 so I think he's very flexible uh, tactically and also in like his formations and I think he's also very unbiased in selecting his players yeah the inconsistency is probably just coming from his young squad and like uh, it's his first yeah. season, so that's was exactly. where it's probably coming because from. Because see, you you need to you need to rotate. Uh, what do you say, like uh, your players? And I feel like he hasn't had the chance of buying players. He's had to use the same players, and you've had, you know, we actually have Deadwood, like we have Barkley and Batshuayi and you know, Emerson to an extent, like these guys are just not performing. He doesn't really have a choice but to like play what he has, you know. So it's it's hard to it's also a young squad. So I think the inconsistencies aren't from his naivety, maybe a little bit, but not entirely. But it's because of the poor players and like maybe younger players. I feel like if you're playing a bigger team you are you tend to go for four three three, but then if you're playing a Weaker team, you play like a, you know, four to three one. Just for ex- just an example, so I just feel like, uh, you know, he he is adaptable, he is flexible, but yeah. uh, it, it's mostly down to the players, I think. Yeah, some valid points there. And to finish off, uh, Don, do you have anything else to say, or can I ask you my last question? No, no, go ahead, ask me whatever you need to ask. Me. Uh, your uh, top four prediction. Top four? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Liverpool. Um, City, Leicester, Arsenal. I have to, I have to, I have to be biased over there. <laughs> you could have said Chelsea then Arsenal. But Arsenal yeah, still I think, I think, I think, um, I think that's more realistic. I think mm-hmm. Chelsea and then, um, uh, yeah, between Arsenal and United for that fifth spot. Yeah, I think that's very unpredictable. Even me, like as a United fan, I'm like confident that there is a chance. But then again, I've seen like inconsistencies, right? Because I'm looking at the fixture list. I'm like, yeah, we got this. Chelsea will slip up somewhere and we got this, right? But then again, we haven't really performed as a team against these kind of uh, opposition. So it'll be interesting. Uh, uh, Zayan, uh, lastly, your prediction? Top four. So obviously, Liverpool champions, that's kind of a no-brainer. You have Man City in second. And I think, this is where I'm like very confused in in all honesty because as I had mentioned earlier, no Europa League. Yeah. So Wolves are also not going to be playing Europa League. Yeah. And we know how good they can be against the bigger teams. Uh, 
Uh, I feel like for Spurs and Arsenal, it's a step too far uh, in terms of points because you only have nine games and it's... Uh, I feel it's like possible, but the thing is, if, if someone drops, they might drop as well. That's the yeah, issue there. there yeah. There's no guarantee that Arsenal are going to win every game. Yeah, that's that the difference. issue there, I think. Yeah. So, Unless... And I think Sheffield United, maybe the momentum might be lost. Yeah. That's yeah. just my opinion. Yeah. So I think they might not be contenders. And I also want to mention Leicester, even though they have a good cushion. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, I think he plays like a very, you know, attacking, not attacking, but like a very expansive and fast-paced game. Yeah. And I feel like since players have not played for so long, and it actually takes a long time for players to adapt to Brendan Rodgers. We saw that at Liverpool as well. Uh, I feel maybe Leicester could slip up, and they they didn't end the before the Premier League, you know, got postponed. Or they they weren't playing well, so I have a sneaky feeling that Leicester will drop to fourth, and Chelsea will come third, and Chelsea will come third. I, I'm just saying. So, you have so a very you, valid point with Leicester, actually. It, it yeah. might it might take them some time to get back to that flowing football that they used to playing. That's a very valid point. But you still but, see Leicester in the top four then? Yeah, I, I think it'll be very close. Uh, not only with Chelsea, but it'll be very close with United and uh, Wolves as well. Because I feel like no Europa League will definitely help them. Injured players coming back. Uh, but... Obviously, not trying to be as biased as possible and trying to speak as realistically as possible. Anything can happen. You know, Premier League, who knows? Maybe in like two weeks, maybe even get called off. Yeah, but, that, that's what I'm scared of. But yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I think injuries, you never know. Obviously, yeah. the no fans, you never know with the uh, five substitutions. You yeah. know, anything can happen. So I think all teams are going to face issues. And that's why... I still feel like for Bulls and United, perhaps, even though they will be very close, I think they'll just miss out. And I can see Chelsea going above Leicester for the reasons I mentioned. So I'll go Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea and Leicester. I might just go United instead of Chelsea for bias reasons. But uh, <laughs> like I said, it's very difficult to predict this. I, yeah, Chelsea yeah. right now in the box seat for me. But uh, I just hope they slip up somewhere in United, continue their form. But you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. But I think we've covered m- most uh, most of the bases. It'll be very interesting uh, to see you done. Sorry. Before before closing, I yeah. uh, just wanted to mention, if we do, God forbid, call the season off, I just yeah. hope that Liverpool doesn't win it, just so that <laughs> like, it keeps them it keeps them waiting for a year, another year, maybe a couple more, who knows? But it'll be it'll just be nice to see them waiting for a little bit longer because we know some of our friends who might really take it to heart. <laughs> but the thing so. is, their, their, their two games will be uh, closed. Are they this week? They're two. I mean, next week are they playing both the games or they're, is they playing? Play? No, they're playing only one. They're, they're playing, playing only one. one because they the, need two the to win. Is, right? yeah. The thing is, if Arsenal beats City, right? Yeah. And uh, and then if City, so if Arsenal beats City and then if Liverpool wins their first game or something of the sort, then mathematically it's done. So there's something like that that's happening. But but no, if it does have to, it doesn't. It's pretty yeah. unlikely because they're at 82 points with nine games left. Like you know, you, if 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 they go on for like even two or three games, I think it's done. Yeah. But I'm just saying for the sake of saying it, just I really hope that if God forbid they call it off, yeah. then they should just. Keep them waiting for another. Do you see it realistically getting called up before it even starts, or you think there's no chance of that? No, no I chance. think they're gonna keep it. I think they they're gonna the, keep it. You, you, so you will see an Arsenal Man City game for sure, at least. At least that much. At yeah. least that much. I think they still go on with the first weekend of all games. Yeah. I think. All games. Yeah. 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 Even yeah. I, I, to be honest, like he said about the German league, what Zayan said. They're going through it. I think they'll, uh, even though Germany, the situation is much better. Like uh, the COVID situation is much better uh, in Germany right now than UK. UK, the cases are still high, I think. Yeah. So I think that's one disturbing fact. But apart from that, I think uh, they probably go with the first week. They'll probably play. Yeah. And yeah. also, uh, you know, knowing the Premier League and the money that's coming in, yeah. I'm sure they'll do everything in their power. That's a huge factor. Yeah. yeah that's make sure the. And see, the thing is, you also have to account that you have, you know, the lower division teams, like the championship, they're fighting for promotion. If you just say null and void to the season, that's going to cause big issues because you have the playoffs 
if there, you can't just hand the third place to come to the Premier League. Yeah. And same with Premier League relegation. Like, I don't think if, you know... It's very example, tight right now. Yeah, it's very tight. The 15th place uh, to 20th is very tight, the relegation battle. Exactly. Yeah, and, I think now, yeah. and, 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 I mean, if you look at the table right now, Aston Villa, I think, have a game in hand. Yes. And, and they're in the relegation zone. But if they yeah. win that, they go above... They go above West Ham. Yep. Yeah, they go outside the relegation. So they go 15th, yeah. I, I think I think they'll do everything in their power to make sure the season concludes no matter what. Yeah. And that's interesting points. And uh, if you, Don, do you have anything to add or we're good? I'm okay. Good. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Uh, it was a really good discussion. Hopefully, next week we'll discuss uh, what happens uh, after the game first. one. Yeah, yeah. It'll, oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, yeah, lastly, quickly, I'm predicting 3 0 Arsenal Obama Yang hat trick. What are you predicting? Oh, bro? yeah. Bro, I already <laughs> called it 3 1. 3 1, huh? You said it's Aguero hat trick, you're saying. No, no, no. I'm going with Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> and quickly, Zayan, 2 2. City, no. uh, you're the realistic prediction, yeah. So I think uh, obviously not supporting both teams, but I think you know today we found out that Arsenal lost to Brentford. <laughs> yeah. In a yeah. He played and half the team. He's saying it so seriously, but I can't take him seriously, man. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, recent meetings, you know, City have absolutely destroyed Arsenal. So. I can see that continuing. Absolutely. Go, but I don't think it'll be like a landslide. It won't be like a 6 yeah. I'm going to go for 2-0 Man City. Man City, yeah. I mean, it, it, like, I won't be surprised if Arsenal win as well because because of the circumstances and everything. And But it'll be, it'll be a good game. I mean, we're all excited to watch. So hopefully see you guys next week and take care and enjoy the games. All right. Yep. Take, care. take care. All right. Thank Have you a so good much. night. Always. Always.